Not so I thought Palb. The death of George Floyd in Minnesota was abhorrent. Racism and intolerance in all its forms and guises is abhorrent. The fight against racism is the most honourable of causes. And I'm proud that this government is led by the most ethnically diverse background ever, with two of the holders of the great offices of state coming from BAME backgrounds. Together, we are in a global struggle against a cruel and invisible enemy. Through our immense and painful sacrifices, both as a country and as individuals, we are on the path to defeating COVID-19, and we're inching ever closer to the normality in our lives for which we all yearn. The process that took place in cities across the UK this weekend, in which social distancing was impossible to maintain, risk reversing our hard-won advances. They risk adding pressure to our NHS, they risk lives. I'm hugely sympathetic to the cause and I stand with all those who abhor racism, but I do not support these protests. And of the small minority who resorted to violence, thuggery and lawlessness, of those who attacked our brave policemen and women who were trying to maintain safety, these people must face the full force of the law. Their actions serve only to risk irreparable damage to the cause they claim to champion. In a democracy, there can be no accommodation for violence or intimidation. On Arnest Morn, this crisis has impacted our tourism and hospitality sector with severity. The lockdown came into effect just as local pubs, restaurants, cafes and other visitor attractions were beginning to welcome guests and visitors for the crucial summer season. This week, the First Minister of Wales, Mark Drakeford, announced that the five mile travel limit is likely to remain in place until at least July and that Wales will remain largely closed to tourism this summer. The economic consequences of these measures for our island's local economy cannot be underestimated. The government's package of financial support schemes delivered ahead of schedule in the face of unprecedented challenges have provided unprecedented levels of assistance to individuals and businesses across the United Kingdom. They have helped to protect millions of jobs and to keep tens of thousands of businesses afloat. Many businesses and self-employed people from across the island have shared their very pertinent and serious concerns with me that the financial schemes needed to be extended past their original end dates. And I have worked tirelessly in communicating these concerns with the government and have fought for the schemes to be extended. At the end of last month, the Chancellor announced an extension to the job retention scheme until October, and that a second grant will be made available under the self-employed income support scheme. The First Minister's announcement that tourism in Wales is to remain largely closed this summer will be devastating for the island's tourism and hospitality sector, along with the supply chain that supports it. The risk of unemployment, and particularly high youth unemployment, is made all the more likely by these measures. I am determined to fight for businesses and for jobs on the island, and so I'm calling on the government to support tourism through the winter, once the current financial packages expire, by creating a coronavirus tourism resilience fund. In March, the Chancellor stated that the government will do whatever it takes to protect businesses and jobs across the United Kingdom. The support so far has been unprecedented, and I will fight for the long-term support that is needed for our local economy to survive this crisis. Our tourism and hospitality sector supports thousands of jobs and training opportunities across the island. Over the last two decades of economic decline, a decline that should never have been allowed to happen, the contribution of the sector to our local economy has been invaluable. However, while we must all now do everything we can to support local tourist businesses, this crisis has highlighted the need and the urgency to significantly diversify our local economy and to reduce our reliance on tourism. This week, the United Kingdom will pass an energy milestone as it reaches two months of coal-free electricity generation. This has been achieved as renewable energy sources are contributing more than ever to the power grid. Just 10 years ago, coal fueled 40% of the UK's electricity production. The decarbonisation of the UK economy represents an opportunity for economic development and the creation of high-skilled and sustainable employment and training opportunities across Arnest Morn that must be seized. I'm determined that our island leads in the United Kingdom journey to being the first major economy to end contributing to global warming. I am working with the government to ensure that resources and support 
are made available to reverse our island's economic decline and to position Arnis Morn as a global leader in tidal and offshore wind power generation. For the United Kingdom and for Arnis Morn in particular, a green future is a prosperous future.